we drove 72 150mm ECD timber piles to a depth of about 3 metres in preparation for this slab. Uh, so behind me the boys are setting out for a 203 square meter slab. Before a slab's put down, we'll clear and prepare the site, strip all the vegetation and topsoil. We then bring in base course, which is like a, a mix of rock and that gets compacted. then we can start building our foundations on all of that. Whenever you've got bad ground, which is common on 50% of the sites we're working on, there's a couple of ways to resolve that. One of the ways is driven timber piles. We drove 72 150mm ECD timber piles to a depth of about 3 metres in preparation for this slab. As a side note, good ground is defined in NZ3604 as having a load bearing capacity of 300 kPa. It's the most common way to measure pressure. You can kind of almost guess which sites are going to need piles and which sites aren't, but it still varies a lot. So here in Upper Hutt, we're in a basin, there's a river over there and the hills over there. Over there you might have to drive piles to two metres, but then as you come in you can start getting away with just a rib rough slab designed for a lower ground pressure. Ground was up here, but good ground was down here. The timber piles transfer the load up here all the way down to here. There's going to be 72 timber piles under this slab here on the townhouse job. Boys are going to come in tomorrow and chop all of the piles to height. The next step between the base course and the polythene is a 25mm layer of sand. Basically the sand's purpose is to prevent the polythene from getting pierced by any sharp rocks. Then we put our DPM on. The polythene's purpose is to stop any rising damp coming up out of the ground. So after the sand's done, the very next thing we'll do is put up the formwork. It's also called boxing. It forms the edge of where the concrete is going to set to. and it's a temporary thing that we put in place until the concrete is set hard. We need to make sure the boxing is both put to the right height and also put to a straight line because whatever the boxing is how our concrete is gonna be finished. There's a lot of pressure in wet concrete and even more when they come through and vibrate it. So that needs to be braced. We put a brace every 600 mils. You might see I'm standing on these big white pods. These are large 1100 by 1100 polystyrene pods. These polystyrene pods also have an insulation value and they form the basis of what's called a rib raft slab. In between each pod is a channel. These channels here are 100 mils. These channels here are 300 mils. The 300 mil ones become an internal load bearing beam and the 100 mil ones just space each pod and have a one reinforcing rod up the middle of them. 
The next thing we'll do is lay out a whole bunch of these chairs. These chairs make sure that we lift the steel up off the pods and keep it the perfect amount of distance below the surface of the concrete. You don't want your steel too close to the surface, but you also don't want it right down the bottom. You want even amount of coverage of concrete over your steel. I like to point out to people that, hey, we can give you a pretty good understanding of costs based on everything from the surface up. But if you wanna know about what's happening from the surface down, the best way to do that is to get an engineer to do a soil test. They'll bring on site a pentrometer and they'll do a number of blows and they'll write you a report telling you exactly where good ground is. And if you're worried about buying a site, that may have been in a previous swamp. That should be something you're doing. The thing to remember is to find good ground, it's not like it's gonna double the build budget. It, it will definitely add a cost, but it's not gonna be like double or triple your build budget. On this one here, we have to drill 59 holes to a depth of 1.5 meters. So what I do is I'll go back to another job for example, with the section nobody wanted, we had to drill 57 holes from memory to four meters deep. So I keep a time log of that and I can look at the drill piles. And at the time, these are the figures I spent 103 hours and we used one pump and four grain of concrete and the digger driver's fee. So I can look at that job and say, well, if that was 57 holes to four meters deep and that cost that much, now we're in, I'm giving my clients an estimate on 59 holes to 1.5 meters deep. I can use that. Point 0.225 of a hole, 1.5. So then we go 59 holes, point, point 0.25 is 14 cube. And we times that by our concrete rate and that gives us the concrete price. On the section nobody wanted, I decided to go for drilled and filled holes. Which was fine, apart from the day that I went to fill the holes. It was raining a lot. Um, one of my worst days on site. What the heck am I doing in wet weather gears? The thing is, I, I have to. I've got these holes and they've been checked by the engineer and we need to get them filled. Somehow you just get out here and do it. We deliberately placed the house as far uh, that way as we could because we wanted to get as much uh, lawn as we possibly could. We drilled down three meters, put a metal cage in the hole, and then we filled it up with concrete. Because we're right near the edge of the bank, it transfers the load of the house from the top of the bank all the way down to good ground at the base of the bank and just gives Jeff and Jen peace of mind. The house is not gonna go sliding down the hill. I think there's no hard and fast rule, but it depends on the site, the engineer, how deep you're going, all of those things. And then we'll work out, hey, we think this is the best plan of attack. Or what, whatever method you choose, and there's reasons why we choose one method over the other. In particular, we chose this one because we only needed to do eight and we want to tie them into the foundation. We decided to do it ourselves. It was a job that we could get in and out and do reasonably quick. And that's what we decided here. Worth it in the end though? Absolutely, you feel like you're in the bush. What a view. I might just stay here with the house. <laughs> <laughs>